This is Walter Alvarez in Berkeley along with Roland Seikau and we'd like to show you some more features of uh, ChronoZoom, our new software that lets you explore all of the, uh, the stretches of time. Uh, in the video number four, we, uh, we explored with you this panel which shows human history back to the beginning of writing, sort of at the beginning of Egypt. What we want to do now is to take you to see uh, human prehistory, the time when there were humans around but writing did not yet exist. So human prehistory goes back to about five million years ago compared to written history which only goes back five thousand years ago. So that means that we have to zoom out by a factor of a thousand in order to see all of human prehistory. Now what you can do is go up to these locator bars at the top and you can click on human prehistory. There, do it Roland. And now it's going to zoom out and you can see written history disappeared into less than a pixel in the upper right hand corner. And this is our panel that shows you um, human prehistory. Now down around the bottom we've shown the different um, uh, epochs and stages of the geological time scale like the Cenozoic and the Piacentian. Those are the, those are the time intervals that geologists use when we're reading history written in rocks. And up above it with the black and white bars, this shows you the polarity of the Earth's magnetic field through time. So from zero, which is at the right hand edge from the present time, back to 781,000 years ago. For all of that interval, the Earth's magnetic field has been in the present field direction, which we call normal. And then in the white box, then you're in a reversed interval. And we show the times at which those changes happened, like uh, 998,000 years ago is that change from normal to reverse polarity. If you then zoom out, you can see above that a, uh, a curve in blue, and that is based on the, um, the oxygen isotope studies of uh, Lisecki and Ramo, who uh, used this as a way of finding out whether the uh, whether the earth was covered in glaciers or let's say whether Canada was covered in glaciers and the temperatures were cold in that case the uh, curve goes down low or whether it was a time when things were warmer and there were not so many glaciers as you see up there and if you zoom out now a little bit to about there and pan a little bit to the right you can see the, um, the curve through the last million years, which shows successive glacial uh, intervals when the curve is low and interglacials when the curve is high. And at the very right hand end, you can see how the curve jumps up very suddenly about 10,000 years ago. That's what's called the last deglaciation. And it's the time in which uh, the glaciers on top of Canada melted rather rapidly and left us with the world that we've lived in for the last 10,000 years ago in which there are glaciers on Antarctica and Greenland but not on Canada. So if you zoom out a little bit further now we've shown at the top in these colored bars the history of the River Nile and this is an exciting thing because mostly we don't think about rivers having histories we think a river just is but to a geologist thinking about, uh, about times in millions of years, rivers change. And this shows what has happened to the Nile. And you can go through and explore it. The reason there are three different uh, bands there with different colors is that different geologists have different interpretations of what happened. So, for example, Paleo Nile was a time when there was a Nile River flowing. But over here to the right, where it's white, the Nile may simply not have flowed at that time because either the climate was too arid and it just simply evaporated, 
or maybe there was not enough uh, water coming in from the uh, high country of, uh, of East Africa to keep the Nile flowing. And the reason those boxes are different is that different geologists have different uh, interpretations of it. Now Roland's going to go over to this box and he's just going to click on the mouse and what you see is that as you click on it, it zooms in and you can read things. Or if you shift click, then it will go back out. And so you can use that as well as your scroll bar as a way of zooming. And so we've tried to build in things like this description of the history of the Nile. And if you go up higher now and look at this, you'll see... Um, something called sapropels, which are times when the Mediterranean seafloor had uh, dark uh, organic gook on it because it was not oxygenated so that scavengers couldn't live there. So Roland, why don't you zoom on the, in on the sapropels there mm -hmm. and you can see what this looks like in, a, in deep sea cores. So this is a long core of the sediment drilled by the drilling ship and the core has been cut into several different segments. And the dark areas are sapropels, and they've all been numbered there so that you can you can um, see the the names or the numbers of them. And then you can zoom in on different portions here of the text and read about them. And uh, we hope eventually to have lots and lots of different data sets like this on Chronozoom that you can choose and and plot on your own panels. And this is the panel that we made just to show how it, it's going to work. Now, the last thing I want to show you here at the top is human history, human biological history. And so here is Ardi, who's the nickname for Ardi Pithecus Ramidus, who was described by a whole group of, um, of paleoanthropologists led by Ber Berkeley's Tim White, and that was published in Science last fall. And Ardi is our ancestor from 4.4 million years ago. Much better known to the right is Lucy, who is Australopithecus afarensis, who lived 3.2 million years ago in Ethiopia. And then to the right, you can see Tim White's interpretation of the different uh, species of, of humans, the genus Homo, going all the way to the right, where you can see um, Neanderthal, here and by the way there was a wonderful article in science just last week uh, in May of 2010 which uh, described which reported the genome for human Homo neanderthalensis and then finally here is Homo sapiens and that's us.